Okay, I will be the uh, moderator for today's talk. I am uh, personally, I'm uh, Chao Dan, publisher of the R newspaper and Leap magazine. Uh, so this talk is organized by Gallery Weekend uh, Beijing in partnership with uh, Zurich Art Weekend. We have uh, invited four, uh, today we, we invited four guests from our institution and galleries in China and Switzerland who will take part in this panel discussion. Here I would like to introduce uh, our guest today, first of all, Annette uh, Bagwati, the director of the museum uh, Rienberg in Zurich. I, 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 I think uh, my pronunciation is correct for you. And yes, perfect. Uh, Greco uh, Steiger, the founder of the Gary uh, Greco Steiger in Zurich, and Philip Tinari, the director of UCCA in Beijing, and Lu Jingjing, director of Beijing Commune de Gary. Uh, so today, uh, the title uh, of uh, the topic of our conversation session today is Perspective from the International Art Community, Challenges, Challenge and Possibilities in the Time of Global Crisis. And uh, I live in Europe for more than 15 years in, in France and I work in China since 2012. I've been um, in China since this January after the outbreak in China during Chinese New Year. I experienced uh, the anxiety and pain following the exchange with my friends who live in Wuhan in Hubei province and reading the news through the media. So later when uh, the, pandem the pandemic became uh, more serious in Europe, I experienced again the same anxiety and pain. So as China comes out of lockdown, we have um, resumed working and communicate with, uh, communicating with my uh, colleague and partners in Europe and also in US who are still working from home. So uh, obviously the COVID-19 pandemic has brought the world to a very um, a standstill and frozen the international art community along with, uh, with it. But from another perspective, the crisis carry both challenge and new possibility calling for deep reconsideration uh, of how we live, how we interact and think. So first of all, I would like to ask Annette Bagwati and Philippe Tinari, and two museum director from Zurich and Beijing, how our institution face the current crisis. And what do you think is the most urgent agenda and task for a museum? And so, Annette. Um, yeah, obviously, as you described it so well, um, it was a, it is still is uh, an exceptional time with extraordinary challenges, and um, uh, the uh, closure. I think for us, the closure of the museum on the thirteenth of March was a symbol of um, the changing uh, art world uh, that we are facing, the new challenges that lie ahead of us. You said um, you mentioned interestingly. It sort of the outlet was frozen. That's not quite what we experienced. Um, we had a momentary um, standstill, this kind of um, not being able to receive visitors for um, eight weeks. Now we are luckily open with restrictions though. But um, of course, so we tried during the lockdown, we um, tried to very quickly devise strategies to connect, uh, to keep connections up with the audience with uh, visitors um, that um, we used to have uh, on, on site to connect through the digital, to strengthen the digital front, but also to keep up and maintain close contact with our partners worldwide. The museum, Redberg is a museum um, which is uh, specialized in non Western, non-European art. So we have broad networks worldwide and these networks were really important to us and that has been continued throughout, as has been the reach out to our audience. Um, now that uh, since the pandemic is, um, so it's um, 
in certain uh, extents it's controlled, but it's definitely not over. So the challenges ahead of us um, are that we have a new situation where we may receive or we can receive, luckily enough, um, visitors, but under very different circumstances. So one strong uh, aspect is while we work out ways to make it a very pleasant museum experience still with restrictions, we have continued to strengthen the digital um, to provide offer programs also online um, to at the same time uh, use the digital to enable new um, experiences of artworks that you wouldn't have online. So as a kind of complementary uh, museum online. Thank you. And uh, Phil, how about Beijing UCCA? Sure. I mean, I think a lot of the issues that uh, art institutions and museums are facing around the world and in light of the pandemic are similar, um, but of course distinguished by where we are and by what kind of institution you know we are. So UCCA, of course, is, is not as a Kunsthalle, not a collecting institution, um, which means you know a, a, that what we at the end really are is a community of of audience and of artists and stakeholders and staff. Um, so our immediate efforts after we closed, which was just in the lead up to the Chinese New Year, actually as scheduled on, I believe, January 23rd, um, you know, once we realized that we wouldn't be reopening uh, as normal on February 3rd or really any time in the, in the following several months, um, we also started to think pretty quickly and nimbly about how we could continue to activate, um, in our case, the exhibition that was up at the time that we closed called Voluntary Garden through a series of kind of online musical events. Uh, but we also had to think about how to completely restructure our program because, um, you know, it's not in our case as simple as um, covering up, you know, permanent collection galleries and then and then reopening them. Instead, you know, our, our whole, actually our three main exhibitions uh, for this year became untenable um, because of the level of international collaboration they, they're built on, which is, uh, you know, most of our exhibitions are like this. So we spent, uh, the you know, from the time we realized that actually the gallery weekend was going to happen in late May, um, which was, we learned in I think early or mid-March, we sort of came to understand that, you know, there would be a reopening in Beijing uh, around that time and that we really needed to be ready to go again by then. But this meant coming up with an entirely new exhibition um, on a moment's notice and kind of with the implicit, you know, restrictions that this era has brought to us. So no international travel, drastically reduced budgets, um, heightened political sensitivities, um, and, you know, visitor anxieties. So uh, we'll see how that works. The show opens on Wednesday. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty proud of what we've been able to, to do quickly. But, um, you know, in a way, for us, it was also a, a, an interesting thing to, to come to realize that, you know, we, I think, are among the more professional institutions of contemporary art in China. Um, we're always trying to do things further in advance, you know, to really lengthen our preparation timelines and our procedures to be more in line with, you know, our international colleagues. But, you know, working in China has a way of uh, happening very quickly. And so it was interesting to suddenly find out that that was actually, you know, not a weakness, but in this case, a strength, um, being able to kind of turn it kind of instantly and really rethink. Um, our whole logic of presentation. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. But still, you know, I think there's a lot of lessons still to come. I think uh, just to add to that, uh, I think what you mentioned uh, is uh, quite right. You notice at the moment of this, uh, of these changes, how how interconnected everything is. And uh, as you say, like with, it was the same with us, the exhibition planning was heavily affected because all of a sudden, I mean, you always know you are, have lenders from worldwide, but what that really means, like when you even shift an exhibition that has already been planned uh, for, because we also had to, or we moved our exhibition to the fall we were supposed to open uh, uh, two weeks ago and uh, whom you have to contact into I this is a huge ship uh, you have to sort of re <laughs> redirect yeah. uh, everyone has to be um, uh, really uh, accommodating and you have to ask everyone to, to sort of join you in uh, redirecting the ship all the lenders had to agree so I think it's a huge enterprise which um, 
as hard as it is, it also has, I think, beautiful moments when you see everyone is in sure. solidarity. Mm -hmm. Everyone tries to know how hard it is, knows how to uh, work it out together. So I think that's a great thing. The other thing is, of course, uh, I mean, we are in a very quite privileged situations, but you also deal with museums that where you notice all of a sudden these economic um, hardships. Uh, artists, uh, art productions that can't um, uh, operate, can't be uh, realized. So this is, again, I think, calls us also to task as culture producers in Europe to um, be even more engaging international uh, partners. And what, what kind of assistance have you, has your museum received from the government in, in Switzerland or in even in China, and what would be the most helpful for you, your institution, uh, at this moment? And Annette, please. <laughs> we are in a municipal uh, museum, and uh, I must say, um, I'm really grateful how supportive the city has been uh, all the way through. Um, uh, we uh, sort of salaries uh, were uh, continued to be paid. Uh, we didn't have to follow um, any team member. Uh, the the infrastructure is quite well developed, so we could actually uh, use home office, continue uh, in our home office. And I think these are very privileged circumstances. I think other museums are in much less fortunate uh, circumstances. So I'm extremely grateful and see that also as a responsibility to use these resources uh, to um, uh, engage uh, in or continue uh, strongly uh, our um, other activities. Um, yeah, um, I think. Um, of course, uh, the program funding, which most museums and us included, uh, that will be a challenge ahead. Um, that uh, program money, uh, we depend on income, uh, we depend on uh, funds, uh, third body funds. And so I think um, that would be a wish uh, that uh, funding bodies that use perhaps to uh, support exhibitions, physical exhibitions in the old way, that they perhaps devise new programs where uh, the digital new museum experience are being considered as fundable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, Philippe, Phil, and I know in China for, for the private museum, the government didn't get any fund. I don't know if they give any fund, but do you have any, receive any help, any um, fund from the, from the private sector <laughs> or the... Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of a funny conversation to have in the context of Gallery Weekend, which is also owned by, you know, the landlords of 798, um, because there, there have been some policies uh, to, to the galleries and to the commercially registered entities in 798 from, you know, the Seven Star Corporation, which is the, the, the entity that owns the buildings there and, and is the, in turn owned by the Beijing Electronics Holding Company. It's sort of funny because... Um, you know, we were very happy to finally register as a, as a nonprofit museum uh, two years ago. But this actually puts us in this funny space where it, it's our, own, our sort of lease structure is complicated because we also have like the store or our kids education, our for-profit entities separately registered. So those can receive the subsidies quite easily. There's like a, a, essentially a three month rent subsidy available. And Jingjing can probably talk about this in more detail to the galleries in, in 798. Um, but you know, most of our lease of course is under the museum and the, the government seems, seems to believe that museums are toys for rich people. Uh, that was one word that I heard back. So um, we, we're sort of in the process of convincing them that we're not a toy for rich people. We're actually a, an institution committed to the public that welcomes over a million visitors a year and presents a, you know, an, a, a a great international program. We've received many heads of state and very senior ranking Chinese government officials. So hopefully, you know, you sometimes think of the Chinese government as like a monolithic entity. And actually there are a lot of different um, kind of forces within it and they all have different understandings. So, you know, some people higher up kind of understand what UCCA is and the, the role it serves in, you know, diplomatic and cultural exchanges. Uh, like for example, last year with the Picasso show, but you know you can't really expect a bureaucrat at a state-owned electronics holding company to totally you know be on on the program uh, when it comes to kind of cultural policy. So it's uh, it's always a struggle, but um, hopefully in the end we'll be able to uh, see some of that that aid. And you know, uh, luckily um, we are you know nimble enough that we've been able to get to to this point, and hopefully you know things are 
on their way back to some kind of normalcy and we'll be able to operate as, as usual. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And next question I will ask uh, Greco and Jingjing. And since the outbreak starts, many galleries have been closed around the world. Almost all the employees are working from home. Many of the art fair had also been rescheduled for this year, and uh, even cons consolation and postponed. Art Basel Hong Kong moved to uh, online viewing room in March. And our Basel in Switzerland will also be delayed to until September, maybe. And now China and Europe are both gradually coming out of lockdown. And Gallery Week in Beijing finally is happening with a two months delay. And galleries in Switzerland uh, have started to reopen since I think Greco yeah, since May, uh, 12 May. And my questions for Greco. Uh, Stanger and Lu, Lu Jingjing, it's in your view, what will be the art market like the second half of this year? If the market remains depressed, uh, how are you planning to uh, go through this difficult uh, period? And Gecko, please. Um, yeah, that's the million dollar question in a way. Um, <laughs> uh, there is, there are several, um, aspects to this perhaps I mean on one hand will depend on what um, what's possible to do in the second half of the year um, sort of legally or in terms of uh, sanitary um, uh, restrictions that might still be in place um, at the at the gallery itself and uh, then certainly um, I wouldn't ignore the voices of pretty much every economist in the world that we are facing uh, quite likely a prolonged recession. Um, so the outlook for the second half of the year is somewhat mixed. Uh, you're certainly not counting on the numbers at the end of the year being excellent. Um, but at the same time, uh, sort of strangely, this time has, uh, has brought quite a bit of, of, of energy and curiosity and, uh, and, and um, the aspect of community that has been addressed in, in a lot of different contexts uh, in this moment and so it's not it's not all negative in a way even if um, quite possibly a lot of um, businesses um, have have suffered um, considerably in the past two months and uh, will continue to do so um, yeah, so <laughs> I'm cautiously optimistic in a in a sort of almost a global sense and uh, <laughs> perhaps a philosophical sense, um, and uh, but also cautious in a as a as an independent uh, small business and, and uh, cultural producer in a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jingjing, how about the uh, Beijing Commune? Uh, well, I think things changed has been changing. Uh, ever since the, the breakout uh, in Wuhan in, uh, in January. You know, at that time when we were talking about uh, if uh, Abbas Hong Kong is going to happen, what's going to happen at that time, we thought, uh, you know, we didn't, at that in, I think in February, we were still uh, guessing whether it, it would be uh, canceled or not. And then when it was canceled and, and all things happened online finally, we thought that, uh, you know, as long as this is, uh, this happened only in a certain area, like in, only in the, in the greater China area or in Asia, uh, things will still, you know, the whole world still will still be going on in the normal track. But uh, then, uh, then you have the outbreak in Italy and in the, in the whole Europe and then in America. So uh, things are changing so fast. It's, it's out of our expectation. And I, um, I think that uh, the later part of the, uh, the economy of the later part of the year really depends on how uh, COVID-19 is control is going to be controlled. So, but anyway, I think uh, after all, uh, this has influence the confidence uh, of the collectors about the uh, of the market uh, about the uh, economy so yeah um, but we will have to say you know uh, who knows 
because it's like the um, the the market, the, the the stock market is like a changing, you know, day by day. Everything is changing so fast. So let's uh, look and see, uh, at least from uh, in a, a regional um, perspective, to see how things are going to uh, move on in within China, because most of the cities actually loosen has loosened their uh, has loosened their Restri travel restrictions. So we can see how the economy in China uh, can move on uh, in a later part of this year. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, it's, 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 uh, because you, you don't have the, you have the travel restrictions. So you don't have the art fairs. You, ha you don't have to spend money on art fairs. <laughs> in one way, you, you don't have a certain amount of money. <laughs> Yes, um, I think that the the cost of the art fairs and, and international troubles, and also even the, the with uh, the troubles within China, each year also is is a uh, is a budget. It's quite a budget for the gallery. Yeah, I I, I totally identify with that. It's kind of amazing. Um, you know, it, it's in a way it is possible to just go into this slower metabolism, right? Where you do kind mm -hmm. of you do less and hopefully it's still enough but it's not it's just not it's just a different rhythm right so you're yeah there's not as much revenue coming in but there's significantly lower costs as well yeah mm -hmm. and has gary in in switzerland and in in beijing as um if you're talking about the 7a give some uh, maybe substance uh, the the grant or the help for the galleries, and what what is the, the the most important support you 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 need at the moment for the galleries, and did you uh, receive any form of benefit or assistance from the government from the other um, Beijing? Yes, in Beijing and also in uh, in Zurich and in Switzerland. Okay, in Beijing, uh, just as uh, Phil just said, um, 798, which the landlord of uh, of the seven uh, the seven star corporation is, uh, which is the landlord of the 798 uh, our park, um, has been doing uh, reductions on the uh, rent cost. Uh, Phil had just said that galleries and small business uh, got um, reduction from uh, on the rent um, for. You know, at least one month. So we're talking. They're talking about like giving uh, one extra month for uh, for you know galleries. Actually, are also small businesses. Yeah, and uh, oh, uh, because you know Seven, seven Star uh, Corporation is a state-run company, so you can say that it's, a, it's it's you can tell you can say that it's from the government. And also, um, as a business, we have uh, as long as we didn't lay off any of our staff we receive a tax reduction um mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. also we have some you know because we have to make co-pay for the insurance of our yeah. staff and then we have a cut off on that part too so mm -hmm. it's kind of um um help from the government yeah. mm -hmm. but uh, also i think the most important thing is that you know uh, when we made our uh, uh, close the year, I mean 2019, because uh, we sent out the, the last invoices actually um, right before uh, Chinese New Year, um, which coincides the outbreak, the outbreak of the COVID-19. Um, but we were so happy to see that uh, the collectors are are uh, paying, or they finished the payment, or they, yeah, you know, uh, no one um, shrank from their promises. You know, they're still making the thing happen. I think that this gives us a lot of confidence because that means that they, they value, they still value the connections to the art world and they keep their prom promises. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This gives us confidence. Mm -hmm. And Michael, how about uh, Zurich? And um, yeah, we have different measures that really we fall into the category of a, of a small business. So that's uh, what anybody in, in, uh, in the economy can receive is uh, support in terms of uh, partial unemployment. That's uh, when hours fall away for employees, the state compensates uh, some of the salary that they
they receive. Um, uh, there are credits available um, that you can get incredibly quickly if you need to. I think they are uh, up to 10% of uh, the company's revenue from the past year. Um, there is rent reduction that's been bouncing around in the government. It's one of the more complicated issues. Um, and that's, I'm not sure if that's now been decided to, to what extent that's going to um, it's going to help uh, what, the, what the percentages are, but something is coming through. Um, and it's slightly disappointing being in a, in a cultural building that we really have to wait for for the the government to to do this. That the the landlord itself doesn't uh, sort of do an initiative and uh, get in touch. And uh, um, because I suppose. Even if we are a gallery, we, we do see ourselves uh, ourselves very much as part of the cultural landscape, um, more so than just a, a, a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as galleries, um, and yeah, please, can I go? Uh, perhaps more more so than just the the economic. Uh, yeah, there have been um, uh, collectors who who certainly didn't uh, abandon us, even if it's gotten quieter so that's uh, that's encouraging people are still excited uh, about uh, about what we do even if we're somewhat restricted in how we can do it and um, and uh, we felt people really missing um, culture in this time and so that's that's also a, a, for us I think a significant form of support when we can even reach out online and uh, have people participate in, in talks um, that we've programmed uh, through the gallery in, in some ways, very much like this in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I'm another question about the artists uh, who you work with. Um, uh, what are their concern and demands uh, during these periods? Um, that's uh, very individual. Um, they, they can be really practical. Uh, we have an artist working on a show uh, for June that's um, sort of facing really mundane problems like uh, having much longer delivery times for acrylic glass because all the shops are installing uh, sort of these shields and restaurants, sort of divisions and so on. Um, so they can be really practical uh, concerns uh, from other artists we've heard through all the postponed exhibitions. Uh, artists that really produce shows for specific spaces that's been somewhat strange to, to not be able to do that, to not currently be, be working very specifically towards a, a show and uh, asking themselves to what extent they can uh, adapt their, their practice, just their daily sort of life in the studio, what their sort of focal point is right now. Um, and yeah, they're dealing with a lot of postponed uh, dates and uh, certainly performance is uh, difficult right now. Um, you can't assemble an audience. Um, yeah, I think uh, like, like for most of us, sort of planning ahead is a major challenge. Mm -hmm. And Jingjing, how about your artist? Uh, yeah, just like uh, 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 what uh, Gregor has said, they have to face to some very mundane issues, like because uh, uh, most of our artists have kids, you know, it, uh, uh, because all the schools and kindergartens are still uh, in lockdown situation. So uh, they have to spend more time at home to take care of their kids. Um, and also, uh, uh, like for some of our artists, they are, uh, uh, for example, they were preparing for Abbasa Hong Kong, some new works, but they have to uh, stop. Even to now, they cannot resume their work because uh, most of the factories were um, in uh, rural areas and uh, there were, uh, that areas are of more strict, um, strict uh, regulation than the uh, inner city part and also 
uh, the workers who uh, who used to work for the factories, they because Beijing has an even longer lockdown period than other cities in, in like. For example, compared with Shanghai or other you know, major cities, Beijing has an even longer period of lockdown. So uh, the workers went back to uh, went uh, went to other cities for for job opportunities. So they do have um, um, some difficulties in in making new works now. If their works uh, involves um, uh, teamwork from uh, from a factory, and uh, but for others who are uh, uh, who work with their own hand, uh, things are, you know, uh, for example, uh, one of our artists is still in, in his hometown in, in uh, Fujian province, it's far away from Beijing. Um, the things, they, they just they simply slow down uh, the whole the temple. And, uh, you know, I think they, uh, they have been complaining about the, 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 rep, the speed of, art fairs, you know, and also um, shows not only in the gallery, but also in museums and, you know, group shows and solo shows. But now uh, they, they have to slow down, uh, no matter whether it's about the producing of the work, but also uh, the showing uh, of the work. And uh, yeah, that's the situation that we, our, uh, our artists has met. But also, they, they, I, I talked to some artists, they do have some worries about the, uh, you know, because in, in China, uh, contemporary art heavily rely on market. Um, they don't really have any grants from the, from the state. Um, so they are worried about that. But, uh, you know, as long as they don't have a huge studio uh, with a lot of people working with them, um, most of our artists, actually work by themselves. So they don't really um, worry that much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. So uh, next question to, um, to you, all of you, but first it's about the digital because we heard uh, a lot of uh, the issue about the online exhibition and social media for the uh, for the museum and also for the gallery during the COVID-19. Many institutions uh, have used this uh, opportunity to strengthen uh, their digital platform uh, uh, front, including social media outreach. Gallery are not uh, exception in this some um, and some are very creative in using the online platform. So the first question for Annette uh, Bogueti and Field, mm -hmm. what do your museum do after it's uh, closed during, due to the COVID-19? Second question is, will digital projects increase percentage in the world uh, you do in the future? So uh, Annette, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, of course, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the digital became uh, a very important means to reach out to an audience uh, which uh, cannot be here, um, cannot come here uh, physically. So in that sense, uh, definitely, the, um, so we, we uh, increased the social media activities. We uh, used the, uh, the moment to upload and contextualize uh, material from past exhibitions, the two most recent ones that uh, people couldn't visit. The one exhibition we had to close a little earlier, so um, fortunately enough we had documented uh, a lot of um, events around that exhibition and also a lot of um, uh, visual material, so to give the audience an opportunity to visit uh, online. Um, but um, at the same time, I think that's, uh, we, we always um, attempted to uh, oriented ourselves um, uh, to, to uh, continue and step up a process which had already begun, which is to think through the digital, especially for a museum, as a new way to provide extra sort of complementary experiences of a museum. Um, as you know, the Museum Readback is very much steeped in transcultural um, uh, activities. Uh, the collection uh, holds um, uh, objects from Africa, Asia, Latin America. And um, so the digital is a very central means and will be in the future 
uh, collection online, for example, to make our collection accessible, visible, transparent to uh, community worldwide, something which is not only uh, something that is important in times of crisis, but in general. Another thing in the context of um, transcultural reality is that you face or the, the, one of the guiding challenges mm -hmm. is how can you uh, create multi-perspectivity? Um, how can you uh, basically enrich the reading of an object by uh, integrating different perspectives from the there where the object was produced to uh, people like in the diaspora? How do they react to it? To artists, you invite them to comment on it. And these are all um, uh, aspects of how to read, how to uh, discuss, how to enrich and activate objects where the digital uh, provides uh, exceptional uh, possibilities. So again, something for us, it was always important not to basically transfer, try to transfer a museum experience on site to the digital. That's not possible. So it will always be an analog experience in the Space, uh, with the artwork so that you can't replace. So we rather focus on those elements where you can create a new quality and that will definitely carry on. Mm -hmm. And you, how about UCCH? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, so the, the Chinese internet is, is, a, is a special place. Um, and it, it's, I mean, one of the defining characteristics is just the speed with which new platforms and channels uh, tend to emerge. And the new kinds of collaborations and uh, you know interactions that they make possible. Um, so you know during this period when we were suddenly faced with sort of being able to exist only online for some 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 span of time, um, we actually used it as an opportunity internally to sort of rethink our approach to the delivery of content online across all of these different, you know, whether it's WeChat and Weibo, which are the more traditional channels to, you know, newer channels like um, what's known outside of China as TikTok and, or Kwaisho. And then even, you know, the, the video delivery places like Bili Bili um, and onwards to, you know, certain, certain channels or platforms where we'll, we'll be organizing, um, you know, online film screenings with kind of, kind of interaction happening among the, the viewership, um, you know, on a, on a smaller screen or kind of in a side, side window uh, on places like Tencent's uh, streaming video service. So it, it, this is all getting a little bit into the weeds, but the point is that, you know, it, it had always been something we did and we'd sort of, I guess, historically seen it as an outgrowth of, of actually just analog um, communication as part of our PR and, and communications operation. But, you know, of course we increasingly realized that you know, more and more of our, our lives are lived online. And, and so organizationally, that's just meant for us um, creating a new uh, a sort of centralized uh, working group, if you will, uh, with a single person in charge that's able to kind of evaluate the, um, the, the appropriateness and effectiveness of any given online collaboration. And to give just like one very specific example, um, on February 29th, I, I hinted at this before, but it was, I think it was our most successful during this period. And I think it was, it was kind of broadly successful. We, we organized this concert with nine musicians, you know, tied to an exhibition that we, we had had to close early, um, including, you know, the Japanese legendary composer and musician Ryuichi Sakamoto. Um, and we partnered with, with, this, with this platform called Kwaisho, which people outside of China don't know. And in fact, even people in, the big cities in China don't really use. It's a platform that's much more associated with, you know, provincial capitals or smaller kind of county seat and even village kind of locations. Um, so I, it was it was very surprising to a lot of people to see, you know, UCCA, this international contemporary art institution, um, and in fact scandalous to some people that we would work with something that they considered so so low in a, in a certain way. But it was it was for us like a really boundary pushing experience to. Um, you know, to be delivering like fairly sophisticated content uh, over this broad platform and also bringing all of, you know, kind of our uh, members and fans and, and, you know, kind of people interested in this sort of music and art uh, intersection to this other part of the internet where they might not have gone otherwise either. So, um, yeah, I think, I think this is all going to continue to play out in interesting ways and it definitely just will mean you know, as I, I totally agree with Annette, I mean, we are, I, I think at, at the core of it, we're still an offline institution, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing that can replace the experience of being 
with works of art in physical space in proximity to other people. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it does mean, you know, that everything we do will, I think, from here on be approaching its kind of existence online in a, mm -hmm. in a more, more conscious and more conscientious kind of way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for the galleries, then the, the, do, do you have more sales during the, this period and online sales? And also, uh, do the galleries depend on the art fairs, art weekend, and are the physical form of the marketplace to, to, to reach the, the collectors? Uh, um. Okay, Jing Jing, please. Yeah, Jing Jing. Okay, so. Uh, uh, well, I think um, you know. You may, we have to 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 make it specific about what is online sales. For example, uh, you mean uh, sales that was so uh, works that were uh, sold on online platform, or uh, you didn't uh, really uh, the the collector didn't really see the uh, physical work, but they saw the images and they they they, they decided they want to take it. Um, if it's the later, uh, if it's the la later, I think that we have been doing this all the time, not only during the, the pandemic, um, the whole, um, I guess it's happening all around the, our, uh, the world in, in the art community that you send images and uh, to, to the collectors and they, they sold it and they, they like it. And it's not always necessary for them to wait to uh, the art fair to see the real thing. Um, and to make the decision. Um, but if you are talking about uh, sales on online platforms, we have been using online platforms for quite a while. Uh, for example, Artsy, I think everyone, a lot of galleries are using Artsy. We did make a few sales, but not uh, many. I guess you still have to be, the, the, the pricing of the work have to be in a certain spectrum for for the users of RC to to pick you up from from the the seas the the, the ocean of works, um, and also it um, it doesn't really um, help to forge a, a, a intimate relationship between the um, the uh, the artwork the artist and the collector. Maybe in a, in the a future, uh, you know, every, because everything in, in, involves so fast. Maybe in the future, uh, they will also be functioning in, in that perspective, but not now, perhaps. Um, so, um, and I, I think I read in the in the in your questionnaire, as the proportion of the online sales increased significantly in the recent years, uh, not significantly. Uh, on the online platforms, but we, uh, but the, the connections between the galleries and the and its audience and its uh, collectors, its market, uh, now has been. I think it has gone undergoing a uh, um, digitalization. You know, people don't have to to be there, but of course, physically it should happen first. <laughs> you should have a show there first. But the connections are um, highly digitalized. Mm -hmm. And how about Brickle? Um, yeah, um, I think, yeah, generally, I think it's well documented that online sales in, let's say, over a decade have certainly uh, played more of a, of a part. And it's um, in part maybe because of uh, how, how we use the digital space, but also that. Um, there is perhaps less of a stigma associated with uh, sort of this question, what you bought this online and you didn't see it in person. Um, I think that used to be sort of uh, an, an impossibility or the mark of the, the collector that's not serious or something of the sort. And I think that's um, largely disappeared for certain types of work, at least. Um, it's certainly an interesting moment now where everybody's scrambling to to find their new identity and life and the uh, presence online and how to do things. And uh, you read articles also with auction houses who had sort of long-term plans to, to uh, offer more things online and now they want to do um, 
uh, things in half a year that they initially planned for uh, five years. Um, and yeah, the same is true for, for us as well. Um, we are not uh, on sort of these, these larger platforms like RSP because um, what's always sort of bothered me about those is that everything kind of looks the same. Um, and our interest in this is as a gallery, but also as sort of the co-founder of a, of a fair in Paris and um, as somebody involved with the Zurich Art Weekend is how to how to create a digital experience that is um, more specific, uh, more intimate, that uh, sort of directly can connect with people and is not um, purely scrolling through images, which also the first the sort of fair viewing room um, have been yeah, somewhat uh, limited in those in those ways, and I think uh, it's easy to offer products online. That's been happening for a long time, but to to create a real a real context and uh, gain the enthusiasm of the people, and maybe uh, having an event uh, online rather than some uh, distraction uh, is, is I think. Uh, the, the major consideration for us in, in, in yeah, really uh, taking something online more significantly than just uh, the, the experience that everybody's enjoying right now of uh, seeing everything with a price next to it in the online viewing room. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. And uh, yeah. I, I, uh, okay, I, I want to uh, add uh, that actually uh, we did receive quite a few offers from, you know, mushrooming uh, platforms saying that they can uh, offer online um, programs and invite you to, to, um, to, to participate in. But actually, uh, you see that you can see that all the programs are just designed in a very homogenous way. You know, every, everything looks so, so uh, similar. And, um, you know, that I don't think that kind of uh, digitalization really helped the uh, people in our world and 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 outside of uh, and art lovers to uh, to get to be even a little bit more in intimated. It's kind of uh, useless affection labor. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think also the the gallery is based on the trust between the the collectors and audience with the, with the galleries. The relationships yes it's not about uh, showing the images and then people trust you <laughs> yeah I understand so, so the third part because we are, have limited time and uh, the third part of my question is just for all of you so um, the first question is the pandemic has serious effects at uh, the international trade and even culture exchange as a result would your institution be investing more time and effort in your own collection or local arts? Is local and regional arts development become more important? And how to build an art community locally and regionally? So, um, Phil, maybe you'll be first. Okay, yeah, so I mean, it's a complex um, question, especially for a place like ours that's so, I think, so deeply premised on this idea of, you know, uh, how China engages with the wider world through contemporary art. Um, you know, of, of course, we've always had a commitment to the art scene, you know, in which we're most closely embedded and to emerging voices in that scene, and that, that, that doesn't change. Um, but I would hate to think that this meant turning away from presenting international voices and perspectives, because I think that that's kind of what's actually most needed right now, especially, you know, against this background of xenophobia, disinformation, mm -hmm. uh, reduced mobility, um, yeah, and, and all of these kind of disturbing trends that have come alongside this pandemic on, on, on all sides. Um, so I, I mean, just to, to look to the exhibition that we're about to open, um, you know, it's still actually international. In fact, we've got a, a wonderful installation from one of Gregor's artists, um, Shana Moulton, um, taking part in this 26 artist group show. What's different is that, you know, we're not flying.
to learn to you know lose these digital tools we've just been talking about to actually present something on the other side of the world um, without physically being there, which maybe is not ideal, but you know maybe as we think more conscientiously about how we move around and what we send around, um, it could be one possible future. Uh, I think still at the end, you know, it's, 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 I, I hope we can remain as international as ever, but maybe to do it in a slightly um, less burdensome um, and a less environmentally impactful kind of way. Mm, thank you. Um, Annette? Yeah. Uh, perhaps I can uh, just uh, follow up on this. Um, uh, it's quite uh, similar, like uh, the um, Riedberg as a Swiss public museum with an international collection has always been uh, a node in a wide network where, where interconnections, interrelations um, between the local, global and the local has been at the heart of our activities. So um, the, we have a lot of international collaborations partners in Africa and India and Pakistan. And this is something which I feel is um, uh, that we then connect through exhibitions to local communities, to the local audience. And I think um, in times, as uh, Phil, I think, mentioned really rightly, um, where you have, uh, as a result, uh, or research, uh, uh, as a result of the pandemic, um, uh, increasing nationalist uh, movements, you have protectionist sort of political developments that had already been under underway are now propelled uh, further through the pandemic. And I think uh, it's uh, even more important now than uh, perhaps before to point to uh, entanglements, to connections, to cross-cultural relations, to um, uh, bring people together and actually counter way these um, sort of closing in uh, movements. I think that uh, would be an important contribution, I think, from our part, which we have been doing anyway, but which perhaps might be even more important today. Mm -hmm. And perhaps another um, uh, uh, issue um, following up on the idea, uh, so this notion of that, uh, the current crisis, I feel that um, actually it's not, the, the pandemic has um, exacerbated and, and brought to light already the sort of structural challenges, um, social issues, political issues. And I think we have, the, it's not yet, not only a crisis, I think it, you have to be highly aware of uh, social issues going on at the moment, political issues at the moment. And I think this will continue even after uh, there might be an, uh, sort of a, a cure for the uh, COVID-19 itself. But uh, we will deal with a lot of different crises in the future and have to, uh, particularly as a museum where you engage in, uh, in social questions. Mm -hmm. And Jing Jing, please. Can you answer this question? Uh, sorry, because just now I think my Wi-Fi dropped out for a while. Uh, can I have the, the, the question again? So I just want to ask a question about the, um, is local and regional art development become more important for the gallery? How to uh, build up um, an art community locally and regionally for, for galleries? Well, I think this, uh, uh, this question is a little bit different here in, in, in Beijing because uh, most of the galleries in, in Beijing are highly localized. And we are highly based on a local community. Um, by local, I mean uh, in, in within China, um, uh, because we have a lot of um, like uh, tariff tariff issues, um, you know, custom office, you know, this kind of things. And the the Chinese uh, art communities, uh, art uh, galleries are highly involved with the local artists. Well, actually, we are. Um, so, uh, some of the, our peers uh, actually are on the uh, just launched up their uh, programs cooperating with artists overseas and but uh, um, you know this will be uh, the COVID-19 thing will be uh, will be will put on a harsh uh, situation um, on this kind of new try um, yeah because the, the artists cannot travel to China, they cannot make the, uh, because most of the programs here happening in China by uh, international artists are 
uh, highly, I mean, with the galleries, are highly uh, sex, uh, um, not uh, gallery specific. You know, it's more about producing China. Otherwise, you have a lot of like tariff problems. Um, so it's a uh, it's big problem now uh, for the galleries in China to uh, to to build up their uh, international connections. Um, but while for the questions you are addressing to, I think we are already very highly regional <laughs> and highly uh, based on the local community. Yeah. Yes, and Greco. Uh, well, that's that's interesting. Uh, <laughs> just to to see the, the the scope of what the local can mean. If the local <laughs> for you is uh, is all of China, then that uh, <laughs> 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 that's a huge. Uh, uh, local or community, which is uh, which is great that there can be a cohesion in that scale. Um, for me, uh, there is yeah really various ways to think about it, and I think it's it's uh, what Tane said about being cautious about the political in that sense um, as, a, as a regionalism or nationalism. I think that's a, that's a, a sort of a worrisome development coming out of this. Also, mm -hmm. with a very strange mixes of uh, demonstrations that we've seen in the, the U.S. and in Europe, mm -hmm. um, uh, which brings together a really strange uh, mix of people um, and a lot of people from sort of the extreme political right. Um, but in terms of uh, culture, um, uh, we've been really active internationally in, in recent years. And uh, that's, that also shows in the, in the numbers. So it's, uh, it would be curious for me to, to try and think about um, relying more, much more on sort of a, a local um, audience. Uh, I think that's gonna be somewhat difficult, but I know galleries who have um, intentionally focused on this even before, um, because they they couldn't make it work in a sense. The, the, the expense that international um, reach uh, yeah, meant to them and then the benefits from that. And uh, so I think that's, that's something that uh, some people have uh, chosen to do um, even before this. And it's certainly something that uh, that I think about every now and then is uh, how how can you have uh, just just more of a community and um, maybe less economically, but just to 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 have um, this network of, of of people that also just discuss ideas on a local level that I think would be incredibly interesting. Um, but of course, uh, yeah, as Philip has said, and uh, I think everybody, the, the idea is to um, to be as international as, as possible. Mm -hmm. So my last questions, last last questions for all, for your own perspective, of, and uh, when faced with the with the social crisis and political uh, crisis, what can art do? So, Annette, please, you're first. <laughs> um, I mean, art, uh, I think, has always been able to, uh, uh, to address uh, issues in a different language. I think it's able to, um, uh, through the aesthetics, through the haptics, through uh, different materiality, to uh, make people aware uh, of certain situations, ask different questions. So I think in any kind of crisis, not, not only now with the pandemic, it has been able to um, offer this language to think through issues to um, perhaps find ways forward. So I think it's, it's a crucial as ever. And it's very interesting that, um, I don't know, in China, but in Europe, there's this uh, new term, system relevant. So it's relevant to the system. And there has been a debate in Germany uh, whether art is uh, relevant to the system. And I would definitely say yes, of course, because it has this capacity and uh, ability. Thank you. And Bill, please. Um, I mean, it's a space for reflection. It's a space for inspiration. It can be a space for escape. Um, and maybe most importantly, it's, it's a space for solidarity. 
Um, it's, mm -hmm. it's a place to come together uh, and think about, you know, the bigger questions and maybe even to envision different kinds of futures. Mm -hmm. And Jingjing? Jing. Uh, well, I, I don't think that art can save human life, you know, never. Uh, never did it in a in a uh, in, in a uh, such kind of a crisis but it's a living proof of a human and the anger the sorrow and the relief you uh you have been undergoing through this um this uh, especially during this time when uh, humanity is under harsh um, circumstances mm -hmm. thank you and Greco. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with, uh, with everyone. Um, uh, you, you always wanted to do a lot of art in a sense. Um, but uh, for some in, in this time, it's, it's sort of these small moments really that, uh, that I think have been really meaningful to people. Um, in lockdown, people have been able to, to go in a, in a, in a forum, uh, something like this. and. Uh, I sort of be able to sort of step out. Uh, I know I know somebody um, that we know who was uh, a, a young um, child, and uh, so uh, having <laughs> sort of this intense um, family situation, and then being able to from home um, access uh, culture and having some um, all distraction is very sort of uh, prosaic, but. Uh, it's a it's a it's a connection to a, to a community that that uh, reflects back certain certain values and uh, it's, it's always sort of errs on the side of hopefulness. Perhaps I think that's been that's been a valuable thing that the culture more broadly has done in this time. We heard the birds. They sing. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for all of you, your time and very insightful sharing. And this year is also the anniversary, 70th anniversary of the diplomatic relationship between the China and Switzerland. So I'm, I'm very happy to uh, our panel will be, be the part of this <laughs> maybe event. And uh, thank you also for the invitation. Um, from the Gary Weekend Beijing and also the Swiss Art Week, Zurich Art Week. And thank you, thank you, and hope to uh, talk to you soon, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. 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 Thank you.